Are you guys with me? Yes, we're still here. Okay. Still Looked here. like I froze out from it. Okay, so today we're talking number four, Yo Data Base. Yo Data Base. It's all about the base. Um, <clears throat> and why do you think that is? You can't Why run a business. Go you ahead. can't run a business without clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your database is. Oh shoot! We lost you again. Yeah, it keeps cutting out. Oh, man. Okay. So weird. Oh, wait, oh, I wait. hear you, Wendy. We hear you now. Okay. What do you think that's from? That is so Maybe strange. I don't know. Trey had issues the, the day we did Monday, too. It's been hard. Have hmm. everyone in, in, in the office with you or in the room turn off their um, Wi-Fi, maybe? Oh, that's possible. But then they need to be able to follow along too. We'll, we'll let's see how this goes. Okay. If not, I, we'll see if it's the conference room, the presence of other people on devices, or um, you know, the old trial and error. That's what we'll do. Do you? Okay. Are you with me, girls? Yes. Yep, I can okay. hear you. All right. Yep. Okay. Good, good, good. All good. Okay. So <clears throat> let's get right into the content here today. So we're going to talk about your database and um, why it's important because it really helps you to nourish and develop those relationships. I love this slide. Um, it says a powerful database managed by a powerful schedule predict produces a predictable flow of leads. And from a predictable flow of leads, you can build a predictable flow of business. I mean, really, if you were gonna evaluate a business to buy, what are you buying? You're buying their book of business, right? You're buying their client base, their clientele. And um, you, that would have to be, if you're gonna pay money to buy that business, right? It would have to be something that's pretty predictable, something that generates income with consistency, clients that they have long-term contracts with, right? You don't have contracts with your clients except for that short window when they're buying and selling, but, if you have a database that has um, a wealth of contacts that you are consistently, you know, as this says here, touching powerful schedule produces a predictable flow, right? So you've got this database that you are connecting with on a consistent basis. It is going to provide you a reliable and predictable flow of income. And I will say, it's a lot more fun <laughs> as you grow your database and you're growing relationships to be doing business with people that you have um, relationships with, right? I mean, you're always gonna be wanting to add new business to your book of business, you know, just, people retire and pass away and move far away and that kind of thing. So you're gonna always have a certain amount of attrition out of your, out of your um, database. So if you never added anybody new, eventually you're gonna run out of people. You will always be adding new friends to your database. Um, but if you have, get to the point, I mean, I hear a lot of agents that after a period of years, you know, they're saying things like 70, 80% of their business comes from their database, from those pre-existing relationships, either referrals or another transaction. So um, that's a lot more fun, I think, than you know the other pieces. So your database provides a living record of those uh, business relationships, so people you've done business with. 
It helps nurture and manage relationships. It produces a predictable flow of business and it improves um, your service and strengthens relationships. You know, it won't matter if you have over a period of years developed a really strong relationship with somebody, it won't matter so much when their cousin gets a real estate license, right? Mm -hmm. That that relationship is so strong and they trust you as being the person who has their best interest at our heart and being their fiduciary that that relationship will not be able to be disrupted by other people. All right, so let's go on. So go to page three in your participant guide. And I want you to answer these four questions. We're just gonna take just a minute. And if you just see them on the screen and have a scratch paper, just write down what your thoughts are on those. We'll just take a couple minutes and, and kind of process this. Get your own thoughts out and then and then we'll we'll process that together. Excuse me. All right, guys, let's chat it up a little here. So um, who, who has a response for the first one? What is the purpose of your database? I do. Go. Um, so the purpose of your database is, <clears throat> it's like the sole core of your business. It's the place where you start and the place where you end. Um, so it's kind of where everything starts, if that makes sense. All right, good answer. That was Danielle, right? Yes. Okay, you're frozen on my screen, but I can hear you and that's okay. Can you see me now? Oh, now I can see you, look at you. You were frozen like this. <laughs> you're frozen on my screen. <laughs> well, one good phrase deserves another. Okay, anybody else have something they'd wanna say is the purpose of a database? I would just say like the purpose is like to track, not just like your, what you're doing for your clients, but to track like just what you're doing for your business and for yourself and to keep yourself organized and accountable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you think that is um, what makes it valuable or what, what the purpose is or both? I think it's both. I mean, without having like some way to like track anything um, I mean, like, that, that's what makes it unvaluable if you don't have a place to track anything or to put anything. What make, I would say, like, what the purpose is, is, is to maintain your business. Yep. Yep. Um, how about what other industries use a database for prospecting or marketing? Whoops, sorry. Lost my place here. Here we go. Lots. Yeah. <laughs> Anything regarding sales, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say all. I mean, all industries use it at some level. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. For sure sales. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Financial manager, sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Marketing companies, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Have you heard the term data is the new oil? Mm -hmm. The first time yeah. I heard that was, of course, Gary Keller saying it, like, mm -hmm. I don't know how many years ago at one of our family reunion keynote addresses. And he was saying, data is the new oil. If you look at what companies are the top companies, because data and keeping a database and keeping data mm -hmm. allows you to have insights and relationships. Yes. Um, I would say all those things you guys have said are very true. Um, what the fourth question, sorry, skipped one. What makes targeted marketing effective? Um, really like nurturing it and um, caring for it, I guess. Like really looking over like your results and spending time in it uh, every day. Mm -hmm. I would say too, to add to that is it helps you like personal be like more personalized in how you manage the relationships with people like so that you can keep people focused in like what it is that their goals are so you can show like that you're going to bring value to them mm -hmm. so if somebody's a buyer you put them you put them there and they're, you're going to be able to send them information about being a buyer or you know yeah right <laughs> right e exactly i would add that the a targeted marketing goes to the correct audience. So you always have to know your audience. Um, for instance, uh, when my house went under contract this week, um, I went on and um, ordered through list reports. I was able to um, send out a postcard to every house that was also in that neighborhood and let them know you know, this house is under contract. It happened very quickly. So it's going to the correct audience because then they're going to see that and say, oh, wow, you know, this agent was able to sell this house in our neighborhood. Maybe I should contact her. Yeah. Azrae had something she was adding. Oh, I just think also um, to nurture that relationship, um, you make them feel important, right? I'm sending you things that bring a value to you, but I also know you and what you want. And mm -hmm kind of nurturing that contact relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, all good insights, you guys, really good. Um, I think the other thing that makes targeted marketing effective is um, if it's done with consistency, right? I agree. So if they're getting the same message from the same person in the same uh, method over and over and over again, it builds, it builds trust, it builds cons that consistency is important as well. All right. So there are three levels to the millionaire database. Um, sorry, I'm trying to make it so you can see everybody else, not just my mug here, but... Um, so, um, the most important part of your database are the relationships when we keep talking about that. Um, and as you get deeper into relationship with your leads, so let's say you do a Facebook lead, it's somebody who's come into your um, world now, but you only have one way conversation with them, right? Um, you haven't had a two-way conversation yet, you, you're, you're earning the right to do that. So um, that is moving to the next level of communication with those people who are in your database. And as those relationships deepen and become more and more strengthened through your contact, um, that moves you through these three different stages. So let's look at what these are. So the essential uh, level of your database are really just the basics. And a lot of these um, can be the leads that you would get from like, let's say a Facebook lead ad or something, you know, where you, you've put an ad out there that says, want more information, click here. 
and they give you name, contact information, um, and and it's and it's sort of when they say at will, I think it means it's at their will. They will do it as it brings benefit to them. If you know what I mean. All right. Um, you might have a, a a record of of business that they have done before. And this could be someone that is already in your database, that you have their name, their email address, their phone number, or, or just one of those, and um, you have done something with them before. All right, then we'll move into the effective stage. So at this stage, you are obtaining permission um, to, to provide them additional information, to reach out to them, you're going to have conversations. So you are collecting personal information. Now, what kind of personal information, insights and preferences that it's saying here, do you think are gonna be helpful for you? I would say like what their, maybe like what their goals are in real estate, like what they wanna well, achieve. Sure, sure, sure. Like, do they wanna be an investor? Do they just want a, a place where they can retire that's one level living, those kind of things? Yeah. Wouldn't it also be important to write down anything that they might mention as well, like that involves like their personal life so you can make it personal too? Yes, yes. So if they've got kids, if there are aging parents that may be needing to come home and live with them, as Araya said, also birthday, right? Just some basic personal data on them, right? When I was in that age, something that I realized that I don't necessarily always know is pronouns are really big time now. So in this personal information, always I started to ask them, like, what pronouns do you prefer? Sure. And I've never, I didn't know that before. But I was watching um, kind of a how do you interact with different, mm -hmm. you know, um, types of people. And that was one that I feel like that was kind of overlooked. But I never mm -hmm. thought about that kind of. Interview. You know, that was, can you guys hear Azaria? Not really. Okay. You have to sorry. talk up, sorry, girlfriend. Sorry. She that. was saying um, that. Um, pronouns with millennials and Gen Z asking what pronoun do you prefer to be referred to might be important to have in your database, right? Um, and that was one of the questions on our mega camp registration this year that was there. And I don't remember seeing that before, but I think you're right that, that in our current um, social culture, that that is something that is a growing expectation that we that we are respectful of people's preferences, even in that regard. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, can also be, do they prefer to be called Benjamin or Ben, mm -hmm. right? Because um, I have people who are Tommies and Toms <laughs> and Thomases in my world. How about you guys? Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Anything you want to add to this, Jack? John. <laughs> yeah, John Jack. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And the other thing is, um, I remember going to a training with um, <clears throat> Jean Rivers, who, if you ever hear any trainings coming up and Jean Rivers is teaching, do it. He's awesome. Um, but he said, you know, Finding out that someone was a total soccer fan and making a note of that in his thing. And then when he, someone gave him like a set of six soccer tickets, he thought, oh, I know this person in my database is a huge soccer fan. They would really love this. And he could reach out to them and say, hey, I just happened to get six tickets. Would you and your kids like to go? And that is a, I mean, just think about if your realtor did that to you, are you ever buying anything from anybody else? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the military is a big one. People who have military in their background, exactly. You know, you might want to do something special for that person on Veterans Day. More than just the general thanks for your service Facebook post, you'd want to do something different. So you can see how um, having collecting data, having what, what we call a data rich <clears throat> bio on somebody is going to be really helpful. The next point here under an effective uh, in the effective column is segmented and group based on items one through six. So <clears throat> do you guys know what that's referring to? So would that be like, for instance, in my circle of influence, I have hockey parents in, in one segment and I've got people that live in my neighborhood in another, something like that? Exactly, exactly. So you might have past clients, whether they were, you know, a seller or a buyer or both. Um, you would have in there, um, <clears throat> if they're neighborhood friends or Cub Scout friends, church friends, you know, if they're the um, families that you know from being on the sidelines at soccer, right? And, and so you're going to segment those with tags and command. And in a little bit, I'll do a little demo for you guys. How many of you are, have started your database in command? Yeah. Me. Yes. Is that everybody? Yep. I mean, awesome. I'm Danielle. Great. That's great. Um, and have any of you started using tag? Yes. I have. Okay. No, I should. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll demonstrate tags to you. One of the illustrations I like to use about how tags can be used effectively is if you have been on the sidelines watching your kid play soccer with all these other families and you've built these bonds and you've put them in your database now um, because you happen to be the treat organizer or something. <laughs> it's my pre-COVID world, um, right? So you've put them in your database and at the end of the year, Wendy Young Real Estate, Wendy Steelhoff Real Estate Team is going to provide, um, is going to host the World Cup party for everybody. And we're going to watch, I'm going to invite everybody to a World Cup soccer party and it's going to be underwritten by my business. It'll be, my business will be the one that's providing that for all the soccer pe people, right? Um, or if you were going to send out a soccer schedule for Minnesota United to all those people. So you're going to have ways of, of communicating with people that are specific and they're personal and they're based on things that you actually know about them and you're giving them information and content and building a relationship based on something real, <laughs> you know, and not just some mass marketing thing. Does that make sense? Yes. Which brings us to point number eight there, it's purposeful and consistent communication. So some of those things that you'll have that maybe you are going to create to connect and strengthen the soccer <laughs> tag, that, that, those relationships, you might be doing something different for um, if there's a charity that you're involved in or um, if, if it's just things generally for everybody in your world, you're going to be able to communicate specifically and effectively um, based on those tags. All right. When they get to level three, the exceptional level in the millionaire real estate database, um, they're talking automated custom communication built around triggers. What do you think that looks like? Smart plans? Yep. Smart plans. Aren't you just the smart one? And those <laughs> would be things like what Azurea said, maybe you put them on a birthday smart plan when you have their birthday. That's triggered, it's custom, it's automated. Um, it's also going to be things like, um, you know, birthdays, right? We're all going to get our Facebook or Instagram notification at somebody's birthday and wish them happy birthday. But, you know, uh, there's a smart plan in there for um, home anniversary. 
Now that's something really unique to your relationship with those people um, because you've sold them their home. It's the anniversary of their home. And if you put them on that smart plan, it's going to send you a trigger that says, you know, maybe buy a card and mail it this day with maybe a little gift card in it. And then on the day, and that'll be like three days before or what have you. And then on the day of that, you're going to call them and say, can you believe it's been a year? Can you believe it's been two years? You know, those kind of things. But those are really specific and strengthen your relationship. They are custom and they're built around triggers. There are also things that as you grow, you are going to be able to leverage to other people in your business. Make sense? Who's with me? Yeah. I don't know if that's me. Yes. I often see um, that I have religion as a personal. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people say, like, Mass, Happy Holidays, and that kind of thing. Um, but I mean, people obviously mention it right away, right? Like if they're mentioning it, if I pass it. I can't it. hear again. I'm okay. I'm She's sorry. such a gentle soul, yeah. this one. You got it. It's the microphone. Um, one thing I was just kind of thinking about was religion. We a lot of times say like happy holidays or Halloween or just like things like Thanksgiving, things like that that people often celebrate. So whether they mention it in passing or um, they keep having a conversation about it, they're going to go to church on Sunday. Kind of making it personalized that way instead of saying happy holidays if they are celebrating instead, you know, um, Ramadan in mm -hmm. the summer or that kind of thing, making that more of a personal touch instead of a, mm -hmm. kind yep. of a normally celebrated American holiday, I guess yep. you could say. So, do you guys follow that? No, it's still kind no. of hard to hear. Okay. Um, so, as Araya was saying, you know, another point might be religion that, you know, rather than just sending out a blanket happy holidays kind of thing every year, to um, as you're gathering people's information, if the topic comes up and you find out what their faith preference is, um, that you can put that in their database. And then you can create, and you could create a smart plan for people in your world that are Muslim, for people in your world that are Jewish or people in your world that are whatever it's going to be that have specific holidays that you can put those in your smart plan and then um and then put those people on those smart plans that will remind you to um honor them according to their own faith preference as well yep and strengthen that relationship rather than just do the blanket thing can i add something to that, to that wendy yeah so, I mean, this isn't really in your database, but um, I feel like one thing that I've kind of noticed on Facebook and everything, it's kind of important is, especially right before an, an election and people are so, have such strong feelings on both sides. Um, I used to post a lot of political stuff and I feel like now that I've become a real estate agent, that's just not a good idea just because you could be turning off 50% of your database just based on that. Oh, for sure. I agree on that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, so Maureen said she, um, prior to being in real estate, she did some political posting and now she's completely stopped that. And that is one thing that I talk very strongly with new agents about is to really be careful mm -hmm. about what you are posting because people have such strong opinions and it will affect whether or not they will trust you going forward. Right. Now that might be you're okay with cutting off half the population um, and, and, and that political alignment is to you a reason to not do business with somebody. Right. Well, that's your thing. Um, one thing I will say is that um, we do not tolerate here at all um, unkind speech or things where um, people are disrespectful in the posting of their political opinions. You are welcome to um, have whatever opinions you want to. We do strongly advise that you keep those to your face-to-face -face relationships and not 
just that those uh, mass format. Yep. Right. Yep. That would be good. We did have one agent that um, was posting things that really weren't appropriate. They weren't kind. They were um, uh, of a political nature. And we did ask him to leave because it, it is not the culture of who we are. And it is not what's part of how we support. So I would say, you know, um, that that agent felt like, you know, they had a right to do that. And indeed you do, uh, part of our culture and, and part of our um, statements. You guys all got the, um, forget what it's called again, you know, the, the rules. Yep, the guidelines uh, that just say we, we will, don't tolerate racial or sexual harassment or things that are unkind or disrespectful, intolerant of other people's. And so um, when we see things that violate those core um, values and conduct, those will be. So. Maybe we can speak to this too, but one of my big things is I'm into a lot of activism. Um, so that my personal Facebook is a lot of my activism, that kind of thing. Um, can you hear Ezra? Sorry, I'm super quiet. Yeah, I, I can hear it a little bit better now. Okay, I'll try and move again, talking, projecting. Um, one thing I'm into, especially my personal Facebook, is a lot of activism um, around racial equity and social equity and that sort of thing. And so I've been trying to figure out a balance between, um, I think first and foremost, I am my morals and my values before I'm an agent. And so I try and figure out the balance between what, how to strongly center my values and make sure that I'm living those and my morals as opposed to cutting off business in certain business relationships. Um, and so that's a very fine line and balance that I haven't figured out yet. Um, I wouldn't say I'm as political, but more very into the activism piece of it, right? Um, what I feel is right and what I feel is morally my obligation. Um, so maybe one of you could speak to that with more experience or even Wendy, just kind of, is there a balance there? Is there, you know, I don't, I guess I don't really know yet. Um, Cause I've always just been a very firm believer that First and foremost, I am my morals and values. I am kind of kind of thing. So I mean, I I could probably just say like like as a black woman from my perspective of how like I I treat that. Yep. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um. And so background of me is I am biracial, but yep. like and I I've always focused on like okay like when I'm. Like, I have a mixture of diverse friends from all sorts of backgrounds. I've mm -hmm. always made a huge, like, point to make, like, a statement about who I am culturally, where mm -hmm. I have both sides of my background. And I guess, like, it's about, to me, it's about, like, who is your audience and when are you communicating to them? Mm -hmm. Because when I think about how I communicate to real estate, I consider, like, what I do for Best Buy right now is... In my current role, when I am talking about global properties and real estate, like I'm focused on real estate and global properties. When I'm talking about Keller Williams and residential real estate, I'm focused on Keller Williams and residential real estate. When I'm focused on me as an individual person, I want to share with other people like who I am, what I am about, who my family is, where their backgrounds are from, what it means to be Nigerian, what it means to be German, Irish, and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> like, at, like, to me is like who I am as a person. Right. And um, when it comes to like the, like social justice extremely, like it was a huge piece for me because I mean, mm -hmm. like, I have to, I have family members that are feeling it from both sides. Yeah, so absolutely. it's like, how do I, how do I be that bridging gap? But how do I support real estate as like a community for everyone? And um, I think like, it's not about like silencing your voice, but it's about like, targeting what audiences you're talking to and when because like you don't like when you're talking about real estate you want to talk about real estate and how you're serving other people mm -hmm. and when you're talking about like yourself and like who you are as a diverse person that's about you so it's like when I look at my like personal Facebook and I look at my um real estate Facebook page it's like this is where I'm providing informational content about real estate and mm -hmm. giving people things on like real estate stuff now if there's like 
opportunities of where, for instance, when, Wendy, I'm going to say this wrong, at Mega Camp, when we um, voted on our beliefs and mm -hmm. added equality into that belief, like, that's a huge thing to share. Like, that's a big, impactful statement of, like, what it is about your business and who you are in business with. So, I mean, like, I'd focus on things like that. Like, what is Keller Williams doing for social equity? Mm -hmm. Like, focusing on, like, how, like, talking mm -hmm. about the culture of the business that you're in um, mm -hmm. and sharing that informational but then also like still like focusing on what your beliefs are because that's who you are as a person and everyone that you know is where you'll start with and they already know who you are as a person most of them mm -hmm. <laughs> so like yeah. building yourself up in those two directions so i yeah. don't know that's like that's what i focus on yeah good feedback thank you christine and i think you know if anybody googles you or goes through your facebook stuff they're going to know where you stand mm -hmm. um and, and get to know you a little better. Uh, and people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So um, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, which I love. Um, if you guys haven't seen his TED Talk yet, it's a great, great place to start. 20 it minutes, good. well spent. Um, but one of the things he says there is that if you start with a big why in mind, what is it that, that matters to you and drives you, it will attract other like-minded people. So um, part of your database will be probably people that you are serving with in the activist circles, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so that is going to be part of your database, part of how you communicate with your database. And they'll want to know, that they are not just a group that you are networking with to get more business because that would be disingenuous. That would be not authentic to who you are, you know? And that will be a source of business and connection for you that the person who's all about save the animals, save the planet, that's gonna be a, a whole different segment of people that they are connecting with that serve as part of their database in their world, right? Okay. Does that help? Yes, I was wondering. All right. Okay, I gotta put my glasses back on. Sorry, kids. Woo! Okay. Okay, so now that we have um, seen the three levels, we're gonna explore, you know, what's it take? Um, do you guys know what we mean by the today trap? Here this slide says, why use a database? One, to avoid the today trap, and two, for a predictable ROI. Um, so the size and depth of your database will determine the size of your bank account. I am just saying, because your database holds those relationships and it makes your customer information um, easy for you to interact with in a meaningful way. And it can improve your service. It will strengthen your relationships and um, it helps you av avoid the today trap. You're just doing whatever shows up today, but you aren't nurturing any business that's going to come through for you tomorrow. So I love this. Don't you think this is great? There are two types of business, today's business and tomorrow's. And without a database, your business is only built for today. You are only doing what shows up at your open house on Sunday or who calls in on your sign. You only have whatever business you have today is it. And so um, that, that's a hard way to build a consistent, predictable bit, business. Um, NARA says that people move every 10 years. So if um, you're only doing business today, you're only doing 10%, right? You're doing the one in 10 thing. Rather, if you have a database, you are hitting people all along the way. I, okay, now I might have to go get the whiteboard. I forgot I was going to do this. Okay, hold on, guys. I'm going to go get something because we're going to do a little. Did Trey talk about it last time? The graph that goes like this, up and down and up and down. Did he talk no, about no. that? And at no, the top no. of that little swoop de doo is where people are buying, right? So that's your today business. But if you continue to nurture that relationship all the way down and all the way back up again, that's your tomorrow business. 
So if you consider the average person moves five times in their life. Let's say you were helping them with transaction number two. The chances are there's going to be three more transactions that you could do with that person if you remain in relationship with them through your database. And along the way, there will be all the referrals that that happy, happy person, because you've communicated with them through your database, is going to send you. So that one transaction actually is probably worth at least 10. And on a whiteboard? I'm not. I just okay. decided I'm just going to use my fingers in the air. Okay, because your, your screen is blank. Oh, oh. bummer. Well, that's not going to help you any. Um, I was referring to the, it's not blank here, but let's see what we can do. I heard everything you said, but I just okay. didn't know if you were doing yes. something on a whiteboard. No, I'm sorry. Clearly, this hybrid approach leaves something to be desired, right? Okay, oh, I'm going to go back to slide. Um, so can you see that why if you have a database that's, that's data rich and you consistently are communicating with it, how that's going to be significant, how that one transaction turns into many more and it makes your life so much easier, right? If you've got people who you've been building relationship with, which is fun, and then they return to you for business. They refer their business to you. Let's look at what this actually looks like. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the next slide or try to. Okay, for example, let's say there's 100 people in your market, okay? And of those, 65 are looking to be homeowners, but 35 are not, okay? So there's 65 pieces of potential business out there. And of those 65, 58 of those people are off the market. That would mean um, they've either already, they just bought something. They're at the top of that cycle, you know, where they, they have just bought whatever it is and they aren't in the market to buy right now, but will be later. Okay, so that leaves seven pieces of today business, right? If you are the agent who are, uh, are working on finding today business only, you don't have a database, you're looking for the one in seven, right? That doesn't already have a, a, an agent that they have worked with before who's consistently built a relationship. They're what we call an orphan. They aren't represented. That's, that's what you're stuck with. Out of those 100 people, there might be seven left. All right? So, if people move every 10 years and people are only doing today business, that means they're only focused on 10% of the business that can be done. All right? So um, if you are considering all contacts as potential clients as tomorrow business, you can have a much bigger market and you can take control of that future business. All right? This, any ahas on this? Not so much, you kind of got the concept here. Mm -hmm. I really right. like the um, pictures of all the people. It really puts it in perspective of when they go from all like the all black screen to all white of how many people are left. Yeah, right. I agree. I agree. I thought that was a great slide when you when you actually see it go down to just oh, there's just a few. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. A great visual. Okay, so let's talk about, remember we said it's going to give you a predictable and repeatable business. So um, you use a database to take advantage of predictable ROI. That means your return on investment. 
So for every dollar you invest in your real estate business, you can expect at least 14 to return, okay? And it is possible to get much more when you have repeat and referral business. So let's go back to that example. You help that person buy their second of, you know, five homes they're gonna buy in their lifetime. That means whatever money you invested to get that one buyer, now it's going to also bear fruit in three more closings with them, plus all the referrals that happy, happy client is gonna give you along the way, okay? Um, some KW agents have reported ROI as high as 40 to one. And that is possible by consistently communicating with your relationship and specifically your sphere of influence. So it is, it is definitely possible. If you're thinking of all the ways you're gonna invest money into your business, your database is, is probably your best, all right? Uh oh, did we lose them? I think we lost them again. Okay, I wasn't sure. I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is not working so well. No. <laughs> but it's too hard for me to go in person. I feel bad where they're trying to juggle both things, but it's just, it's too hard. I know. I, I literally <laughs> have both of my computers because I, I mean, I work full time for Best Buy right now too. So I have both of my computers in front of me right now. So I'm I very much more about this. Yeah, I've got all three kids home with Zooms and they freak out yeah. and the internet goes down. Or the other day I was in the middle of a Zoom and I'm helping my son do math homework at the same time, juggling all oh that, you know, so. You had me at math homework. Oh my god. Yeah. Grades one thing, but my oldest is doing like calculus and I'm like, okay. Oh. I'm <laughs> so when I like first started in college, like leaving high school, I was like a math pro. And when I first started in college, I was going to school for engineering. Mm -hmm. and it went up to like calc three and I was in calc two and I'm like, yep, I'm done. And now yep. I can't do math at all. <laughs> Well, when they say to you, when will we use this? You're like, well, <laughs> I'm not going to have that talk. You're, you'll use it when you help your kids with their math homework. That's mm -hmm. what makes me so mad. Like, why are they teaching stuff that we don't actually use? Like, they need to be teaching us stuff, like, that actually is, like, used in everyday life. I agree. Not, um, if they can hear that. <laughs> right. Well, like, um, for Best Buy, I do, like, a huge community thing for young professionals at Best Buy. And um, we do events with our teen tech centers. And so many times when we're talking with those coordinators, the number one thing that they're looking to teach like these young kids is they're like getting ready to graduate high school and start having a first job is how to balance a checkbook and how to like make a budget. And it just baffles me yeah. Yeah. how many adults don't know how to do that. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm saying. That's the stuff that we should be teaching kids <laughs> in school and... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think X plus Y, like, we're, we're not using that stuff. <laughs> oh. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, I wonder if they're going to come back. This is crazy. I don't know. Oh. I'm sure they will. We have until noon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
I was trying to figure out a way to create, you know, I don't know if everybody wants to have like a designated time where it's not like you have to be there, but almost like a, um, everyone's going to try from the producers club to go to the producers club room on this day between these hours to like work. Yeah. Office. And then if you kind of almost know if you go on that day during that time, that people will be there. Somebody might, somebody might be there just depending on who shows up, but that you have a greater chance of someone being there in case you want to ask a question or whatever, than if you go, mm -hmm. You know, so um, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but. I would do that. I mean, like, cause like my biggest thing is like, I have, um, I have like my Best Buy stuff during the day, but right now, I mean, I keep both laptops open next to each other. I do everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would be, I would be game for that. Um, if it was like, I don't know, like a Thursday or a Tuesday, I don't know. Like See, for me, it would have to be Tuesday or Thursday. Cause that's when my kids are in school. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll post something on the producers club page and see, are yeah. you all added there now? Does Trey, have you guys added? Yeah, he does. And I usually am in the office most days. I'm just currently sick. So well, you're sick. You gotta That's get good. better. Yeah, absolutely. I have to get better about coming to the office. <laughs> That's like one of my goals <laughs> right now yeah. is like, um, because we are remote until February. I want to maximize my time while I have the opportunity to be flexible. Right. Um, so, yeah. And I also just, I feel like I get so much more when I'm there. Right. And just That's like being able to see people, talk to people, meet new people. But yeah. yeah I agree. I, I, I agree. Like Thursday would probably be better for me. Okay. okay. I'll write that down. Yeah. And I'll bring my headphones so I don't annoy everybody with my Best Buy talks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even if it's like, whether you need help or not, it might just it kind of be like a good check-in with every one day and kind of see how everyone's doing and um, that kind of stuff, so. For sure, I think that'll be good because then you're not just choosing and picking and choosing random days to go in when maybe no one's gonna be there at all. Right. The, these days are set and right. a good idea. Well, and if we could get some of that, there's some people in the producers club that are kind of like more established where they've, they've already had their four transactions with Trey. They're, they're under that umbrella for the first 10, but like, I don't know if you guys have met Ashley or Jelena and they, my gosh, they have sold so many houses already and they've been a wealth of knowledge. I'm always texting them all the time. So if they were ever in there, they're, you know, they're very open to helping people because it was not that long ago they were in our shoes, you know? So if I could let them know too. Yeah, that'd be good. I love Ashley. Yeah. So. <clears throat> How long have you been doing real estate, Maureen? I started um, the beginning of June. Okay. So, um, so yeah, pretty new, but um, yeah, just getting going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It, it is. It is. So I had the goal though that I, so it was like last year at this time, I started taking my, my license courses while I was balancing substitute teaching and my kids and everything. And I said, okay, I'm just going to train over the summer. And I've taken a lot of my continuing ed over the summer, but I kind of had this goal of like, come September, I was like, I got to feel like I'm, I'm actually practicing real estate. So I was really excited that um, something started up and I had a listing, but, um, it's easy in the very beginning to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm doing all this work and it's going nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard in the beginning. And then, you know, you've got a lot of like the more established agents at the office that are like, if you ever need help, let me know. But then you, you go to the office and you don't feel like you can start like knocking on doors, you know, yeah. you don't, it's just so, um, you know, I feel like all of us can be, could be a good resource for each other. And so that would be good. Yeah. That's why I'm so thankful to be on Ryan's team because I like literally would have no idea what to do. So whose team are you on? Um, Ryan Cole. Okay. I don't, I don't know him. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I think it would be, I've even thought that, um, because I did not join a team and I've thought, my gosh, I've seen some of the agents that started off and they joined a team and they're kind of getting support 
from their team as well as through the producers club. So that's nice. Yeah, it, it's very nice because he's been in it for six years now. So it, it's just like having someone guide me through uh, nice. any questions that I have because I definitely don't think I would be able to do it without him. Right. That's nice. But I'm also helping him. This is kind of like how it all got started. So I graduated college with a degree in marketing and public relations. Yeah. Uh, so I'm helping him on that side of things. Um, while he Where did you go to school? Uh, Southwest Minnesota State University. Southwest. It's Where's in that at? Marshall, Minnesota. Oh, okay. Awesome. I went to Mankato. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, I just graduated from there like two years ago. Um, I'm originally from Wisconsin though, so I don't like have like a lot of referrals like everyone else does here. So I feel like I'm starting from like the way bottom. I know how you feel. I'm from Ohio. So like half of my database is Ohio and I'm just now starting to really feel like I'm, you know, getting a lot of people from Minnesota so okay that's good to know and I also feel because like I'm so young like only 23 years old like I don't like half of my database in Minnesota is like kids my age here's the good news though what you guys have you guys are so young gosh I wish I was young <laughs> um you have people that are buying first-time homes and so what's so great is you don't have to have the juggle of oh my gosh, you've got to sell your house before you can make an offer on this. I would really tap into um, being a buyer's agent and getting everybody first time homes. Your friends are all going to start getting married and, and wanting to you know move out from their apartment to a first time home or buy a condo or something. And that's going to be a huge database for you. I so, know. Um, it's so you know, far too. So is that also, just to know, is that like, so NARS published recently, like what it is like against like buyer, like who is buying and selling by age group. And I mean, like there's, there's a significant amount of buyers and sellers. I just closed on a buyer who is just turned 20 years old on his first like investment property. <laughs> and like, yeah, so Never like let age get in the way. It's all, it's just about like having a conversation because if they're not ready now, they'll be ready like when you said tomorrow. Right. You're right. I just like I don't know. I feel like all my friends that I know are not in, in that position. But you're right. If they're not ready today, they'll be ready. Right. Tomorrow. And like but like I mean those people are always good like people for supporters because they work with people that are ready to buy homes. Yeah. And those are the people that are going to be like, hey, my friend sells real estate and she's kicking butt, you know? Right. I mean, right when I got my license, I, I consider myself lucky. <laughs> my mom has much, much of a more strong influence than I. But as soon as I got my license, like my mom started telling everybody. So I got my first client right out of the gate. I didn't even have my Keller Williams license set up, actually. Or my email set up yet. So, like, I couldn't, like, email, I had to email from my personal account. Um, but when I had, like, when I had that first conversation, like, they were friends of my parents, and I just kept openness to doing business in Rochester, because that's where I'm from, but also, like, focusing on, like, telling all my friends what I'm doing. Check me out. Like my Facebook page. Do you make a lot of, like, Facebook posts, or you just, like, literally word of mouth, like, told all your friends? So I contacted, I made a list made like five lists and I put them into the Excel spreadsheet <laughs> and if I like all of my like everyone that I like I know is somebody that I currently talk to on a regular or semi-regular basis and I just started texting everyone and if I didn't have numbers of other people I started um, or if I like had like an error message I reached out to them on Facebook let everybody know like hey like I have exciting stuff coming I'm announcing some new stuff and then I sent postcards to them and said oh. hey I'm a realtor and like even from there like even beyond that like some people were reaching out like oh wow you're doing real estate now like and everybody's just been kind of asking and then liking my page and stuff I haven't done as much social media as I should so when you did reach out, though, that's, like, my question and struggle that I feel like I'm finding myself in is, like, 
I obviously, some of these people I haven't, I don't talk to every day and I don't want to just be like, hey, I'm a realtor. Like, what is a great way to start the conversation so it, it, it doesn't seem like you're just like trying to reach out to let them know? If you just say, hey, what's new with you? And then they say, well, what's new with you? Then you, there's your answer. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's exactly what I did. I just said, hey, how are you doing? And, or like, hey, how's it going? Is my first text. And like, they're like, like responding back and then I just said hey um, I'm getting ready to send this stuff out can you give me your email address and address okay and like people were like why some people thought I was I think they thought I was pregnant and we're getting like, married or something <laughs> I think people thought I was pregnant at first okay. and um, they're like what is it and like I'm like well and that's when I started realizing that people thought that so I started following up and saying hey I'm a realtor I'm starting my own business and I'm super excited about it and I'm not pregnant. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not pregnant. Oh, one dude's back. Oh, hi, hi. guys. Hey. Hi. So sorry. My whole machine just went beep. Oh, no. Yeah. No you idea. <laughs> so now we're going to try the whole share screen thing again. And we're back. Can you see me? I can, can see, you see you. the screen. Now I can see the screen. Yep. Can you see your other friend? Yay. Yes. Okay. So here we go, guys. <clears throat> we we're talking about ROI. And we today's class, I've only got about 30 minutes left because then I have to leave to go get ready for um, team meeting. So if we finish this and, and we you guys feel like, wait. There's more content I need to cover. We'll circle back to it. I'll connect with you later, or you can just go online and check it out in the resources for the thing. Okay, so take advantage of predictable return on investment. How do you like that? You put some money out there and you have a predictable return on it. That's the best kind, right? So what is the database under this why use a database? Number one, it has the lowest lead cost. Okay, the cheapest customer acquisition today is working with an existing customer or other people you know and who like you. It's that simple. Danielle, you've got people that you have worked with at that country club and they know you and they like you. Yes, but and, I uh, currently uh, left there and I am not working there because they're closed down right now because yeah. my coworkers COVID. Yeah. Um, you still know them. You still like them. You can still be friends with them all on Facebook. Yes, and I actually did start emailing um, some of the people that I have met there. Yep, yep. And they have parents and cousins and other things and those those are going to be the people I know you're the one that said, I'm not from here. I don't have a big sphere here. I get it. But every place you go, there's somebody who knows and likes you and they know other people and they know other people. Um, it's your lowest conversion cost too. So when properly built and maintained, a database is actually going to end up producing its own leads in the form of repeat and referral clients. All right. That is your lowest conversion cost. Someone who comes to you and says, hey, I'm ready, right? That is awesome sauce. And it pays for itself. A database makes it easier to do consistent follow-up. And when you're really good at consistent follow-up, the resulting leads end up paying for themselves. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk about how do you develop your database? Um, and, and I'm assuming Trey has talked a little bit about this. Have you seen this screen before? Pretty common. This is how we do lead generation here at Keller Williams. You see the biggest part of this triangle is the bottom. Prospecting. We are prospecting, prospecting based and marketing enhanced. That means the prospecting is time intensive, but it's proactive and you get immediate results. Marketing is money intensive. It's passive, 
you send stuff out there and you wait for somebody to come back to you. And those are generally long-term results. And we do recommend a both and approach. Um, however, your best lowest cost and most immediate results are gonna be in this lower um, base of this triangle in the um, prospecting area. Any questions there? No, I was just going to say, um, Jim, our broker, I felt like the best thing he said was treat your database um, like it's your garden where you have to just nurture it every day. You know, you can't expect a plant to grow if you're not watering it every day or putting it in the sunlight or whatever. And even though you might not see anything come up, it's going to eventually grow, right? Exactly. It is exactly right. That is exactly right. And that is exactly what um, <clears throat> your, your intentional member, we talk about when you're consistently communicating, that is that watering, nurturing, feeding part of what you're doing with your database. So we talk about tags, how you segment your database in order to help communicate with it, okay? Um, business relationships. So someone who you haven't done business with yet Maybe they're a, a painter, maybe they're a plumber, something like that. Um, you might have an active client that you're currently working with. That's a business relationship, a past client, someone who's referred you business, you know, um, Christine, your mother. <laughs> yep. She's awesome. She is your best referral partner right now. That woman's she, gold. Um, that's be, people who are going to be they love you and they are going to champion you and refer everybody they know to you. Those are maybe some specialty tags you'd want to put in there. Hobbies and interests, we already talked about that. Whether it's your uh, soccer parents or um, your, your activist group, whatever it is, those are your hobbies and interests for tags. Um, property type, so maybe you want to create tags for all of your condo owners. Jack, your team works with um, different developments for developers. So maybe you're gonna tag some of your clients or leads according to what development they bought into, right? Things like that. Um, investors, you might have people who are investors who tell you it's my goal to own um, 13 properties that I could, will gain passive income from, and I'll be investing, I, I'd like to buy one every two years, okay? You're going to have people like that in your database. Um, and vendors. So the people who are going to be your business partners. Those are just some examples of tags that can help you organize and communicate with different segments of your database specifically and not just e-blast everybody with the same thing. All right. So now we're supposed to do the tech demo, which I will do. I'm going to see if there's another screen here for us before I get out of this one and start doing the, all that. Um, this is talking about the difference between leads and contacts. Okay, um, in command, if you did a Facebook lead ad, or if you did an open house where somebody came in and you, and you had a little um, thing that they were signing in on, a landing page, those would be leads that come into your database. They are sort of one-way communication to you. Um, you are going to work to create, turn those leads into contacts where you have permission to, you, you know them, you've gotten to know them, you've provided them something of value, and now they're interactive and value-based, okay? So um, a sample touch campaign to a lead. Maybe you put them on, these are sample smart plans, a quarterly phone call, a monthly email or newsletter, or in, or in our case, the uh, monthly neighborhood nurture if you know where they live or where they want to live. Um, maybe two touches, like a, you're gonna send them the Viking schedule or something, right? Something like that and an annual event. Say you're gonna do um, a fall pumpkin giveaway or you do um, 
a spring something spring, you know, simple things that you're going to do. Those would be your 19 to connect touch campaign that you could create that would create, remember we talked about consistent communication to build that database. Um, the only thing in that initial campaign that's gonna cost you any money would be the direct mail piece, right? Everything else is just time. The other piece, your 36 to convert in your other campaign, these are all, um, contained in smart plans. And again, you can see their samples of consistent touches that are, are being sent out to your database. Any questions on these? Are you girls with me? Yes, yeah. no questions. No okay, questions. all right, all right. Just making sure we still had internet here. All right. Um, here are two ways you can tend to your database. And I thought this was really good. Build a culture around testimonials and interviews. Okay, getting back to that idea that people do business with people they like, know, and trust, right? So um, if someone allows you to treat them like a friend or to become a friend, you're building a culture that's not about what customers pay you, but how they perceive you, right? So how do you guys, how do you think you would go about getting testimonials? Ask your friends to yeah, ask people. Yeah, say something on your business page or, or if you've had a client to ask them to review you on your business page. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Asking like people that you work with too, vendors, lending partners. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Mm hmm And I know like from Ryan, the, the guy I work with, he reaches out to people and asks them like he just sold my fiance and I our first home and he reached out to us to ask if we could do it. So it is okay to ask people. Um, mm -hmm. It's not something that people always remember to do as well. Right. There is a, um, a group in KW that started a program called The Promise. And I thought this was totally brilliant. So what they did is they said, um, here's our promise to you that we are going to deliver you four-star class A service. That you are going to be so thrilled with the, hap the service that we give you that in the end, you are going to give us three reviews four star reviews and, um, and we're gonna check in with you along the way and make sure that we are earning that business with you. And if, if we deliver it, will you promise to give us those reviews when we're done? So it creates an expectation that we're gonna be checking in. And then throughout the way, you do have to have a system then that says, I'm checking in with you here. How are we doing on this? Am I delivering? Would you, you know, today, could you go in and write a review that says, wow. Yep, okay, good. And then at different points, they're asking for those reviews throughout that process, whether it's in Google, on Zillow, in Facebook. And um, I think um, Mary Kaczynski taught a class on there's a single link that you can go to that you can send out to people that, that will send them all the places they can do their reviews. So it's kind of cool. And yes, you do have to ask for them. Oh. Um, the second part to tend to back to uh, Maureen's point about watering and nurturing and like feeding our database, right, is that you need to regularly update and prune your database. So if you are making quarterly calls, that means every 13 weeks, everybody in your database is getting a call from you, a check-in call. And when you do that, you're adding to your database, right? You're finding out that grandma got COVID and she's in really rough shape and you're going to want to circle back. And next time you talk to him, you're going to make a note and say, how is she doing? Right. Or, um, their son's going off to college. Now, you know, that's the last one to leave the nest. They might be thinking about next stages. So you're keeping that information recorded and updated 
so that you are having effective and authentic communication with them. You're also gonna be pruning your database. So the couple that decide to move back to the wife's family in Italy, you know, we might have a KW in Italy where you can refer people, um, but um, those are things that you'll take out or, you know, other people who disappear for whatever reason, then you're gonna to wanna to prune it back so that every name in your database is effective and you don't have any ghosts hiding in there, okay? All right, any ahas so far? Anything new, kids? All righty. I'm gonna go out here to, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yep. I can see it. Good, 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 good. So when you set people up on a um, smart plan, the tasks, like when it's your time to call them, are going to show up here. When you log in, it's the first thing you're going to see here in your um, here in your in your just home screen. So it's going to tell you right away who you need to call today, if there's a follow-up that activity you need to do, any of those things. And when I go into my database. you'll be able to see contacts and that I have them broken out differently. So for example, for a while, um, Kevin had asked me to send my morning post. He said, Wendy, a lot of agents are getting value from this and they find it very inspiring and encouraging. You're basically writing little short leadership lessons every day or business lessons. So I think it'd be valuable to share that with the um, agent community at large and show them um, the types of things that we offer here. So um, he gave me a list of agents who've done one to four transactions in the last year. Those are what? What category would they be in? Leads, because they aren't people who know me or that I've had two-way conversation with, right? So I uploaded those to my database and I tag them as agents one to four. That way, when I did a targeted communication, it would be, you know, here's my post from today and here's what I had to share. And I would send that out to those agents. If I have other agents in here, KW agents that I wanna send things to specifically or family and friends, those will be examples of the, the types of tags that I create. Do you wanna see how to create a custom tag? Yes, no? Sure, sure. Okay, hold on, I gotta move my little, move y'all out, out of the way. Um, I forgot I was blind for a minute. It's a new thing. Um, so, When I have a couple ways to do this and I haven't done it for a while, clearly I should have owned up on this more here. So funny. I forgot how to do this. <laughs> You're talking about creating a new tag, right, Wendy? Yeah. Well, you well there are a couple ways you can do it. One way is, I can go in here into settings, command settings, contacts, contact tags. I can create a new tag. So 
think I did know how to do that. <laughs> I second guess myself all the time. So in this case, so um, some of you might know before I did real estate, I owned my own small business. I was an artist and a gallery owner. And so um, I have a lot of, I, I believe in beauty and the art and every day. And so uh, if I were to get back in real estate, I would probably organize a lot of events around art, people who value art and local artists and, and nurturing art in our community. So I might create a tag that is art, okay? And I would probably make it, let's make it purple. Okay, and I'd say create. So now I have a custom tag called art. So any of my friends that either are artists or that I know from because they are have bought art from me or because um, they are interested in the arts in some way are going to get that tag. So if I were hosting an event at the Minnetonka Art Center where I rented it out for an evening and did a, a wine and cheese affair and celebrated some local artists, I would use that tag to communicate with those people. Make sense? Yes, yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> makes okay, sense. so now when we go back to contacts. Do you guys know how to create a contact and add, add those types of tags to them, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, how about smart plans? Do you know about smart plans? Let's look at those. Yeah, could you go over that a little bit? I haven't done that yet. I have, I'm not too sure okay. on it. So the two things that you need to know are um, that until you add a smart plan to my smart plans, to your smart plan library right here, they only exist over here. This library is the Keller Williams ones were the ones that they originally came up with. So uh, a quarterly call plan, maybe you're gonna put somebody on that plan. You're gonna click add smart plan here and that's gonna move it from the library over to the my smart plan list. You need to do that because when you are in your contacts, if you wanna add a contact to a smart plan, it needs to be in your smart plans, not just in the smart plan library out there, okay? So you'll go through these and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna add this smart plan. Yep, add to my, add to my smart plans, yep. Okay, um, I've already done that one. So a lot of these already exist in my smart plans. Open house follow-up, view steps going to say, first you're going to send a text. Hey, so-and-so, thanks for coming by. What'd you think of the open house? You would have to have your Twilio account set up here in order to make that happen, and that's another conversation. I have five minutes left, so I'm going to bring this to Twilio. It's an automated text account, and, and you can set it up through K command. Does that cost money, Wendy? It costs money, but not much. And um, KW just negotiated. So when it first started, I think it was like 0 0.07 cents, you know, just over half a penny uh, per text to send. Uh -huh. It's in command. And um, now since then, Keller Williams has negotiated a special deal with them and, and it's cheaper still, okay? but it's one that you would create a number in Twilio and then that would use this automated smart plan. You can edit any of these steps, but if you had an open house, you came back, you took all the leads that you got at that open house and you put them into this smart plan, okay? It is going to send, you could edit this so it would say, thanks for coming by, maybe you wanna create an open house smart plan for 123 Main Street. So you know which lead came from which open house, right? Thanks for coming by 123 Main Street. What did you think of the open house? Love to get your feedback. You know, whatever sounds like you, right? Next one is you're gonna <clears throat> send a nice to meet you email and it'll have that already pre-templated in there. 
There'll be a two day delay and then it's gonna be, you're gonna call them, okay? So this is a sample of a smart plan that has all these different <clears throat> prompts and triggers in it for you to communicate with someone that's come in as a lead into your world that you wanna make a contact and build a relationship with, right? So that's a sample of one of those, okay? Down here, now we get into top rated. These are ones that other agents have created and now they have added in here. So Marty Miller, who has done the Command 66 Day Challenge, has um, a smart plan that's one touch and it's um, to, hey, I'm missing your email address. Maybe it's a call, maybe it's a script, something. Um, a monthly call plan, because sometimes you have somebody that says, oh, they're ready to move in six months, which we, meet, we know means what? Anytime you hear someone say, we're looking to move probably in about a year, think six. If they say six months, you think three. If they say three months, they're already under contract with somebody else. All right, and that'll change. Someone who says, I'm looking to move in six months, you aren't gonna follow up with them in, in every 90 days. You're gonna change that to maybe in every month, okay? All right, so here are new campaigns. Again, if you see something in here that you like, you're going to click on add smart plan and it's gonna move it into my smart plans and make it available to you to add to contact. Okay, the basic ones here at the top, um, the quarterly call plan, the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. If you have an address for someone or you know the neighborhood they wanna move into, you can put them on this bi-weekly neighborhood nurture and it's just gonna send them an email that's specific to either the neighborhood they live in or the one they wanna go to, depending on which one you select in their contact card. And it's gonna say, hey, Here's what's happening in the market. But again, it's specific information that they'll find useful because it is um, specific to where they live and the values of the homes around them and what's going on in the market around them or in the one they want to go to. Any questions? And by the way, you can set up a monthly neighborhood nurture for them anywhere. So if you had a client here and um, they have a dream of owning uh, a little beach place down on Sanibel Island in Florida someday. You could say, just for fun, why don't we set you up on a monthly neighborhood nurture there? And it's gonna send you an update and you'll get to see what's going on with prices, what comes available. And you never know, someday, maybe there'll be something you wanna see. So, you know, um, that there are all kinds of things you can do with that. But that's that that one and this one. If you just did this one and, and once, you could either do monthly neighborhood nurture or bi-weekly. So that means every other week they're getting one. But that would be 26 touches a year. But they'd get just specific targeted information for them. Quarterly call plan, that would be four touches a year that you give them. So we're talking about consistent triggered communication with your database where you are building that relationship. Here's the birthday one. So remember we talked about that. If you wanna view the steps for that, it says it's six steps. So the first one is to send a handwritten note. Then you wait four days, you do a phone call. On their birthday, you wait a day. Then the next one is um, send a social post on their birthday you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and then um, send a text. So you'll have all those ways that you're gonna interact with them. All right. Um, any questions on these? I'll go back. I have a question. Go ahead, Ann. So when you set up a smart plan, um, like how, is that going to reflect in like your things to do for that day or um, because like I'm, I'm just like 
I've been so nervous to even touch these things because I'm like, what is it going to do? Like, is it going to start spitting things out? And I don't have everything set up and I don't like want it to go to some certain people or if I, I don't want it to go to everybody. I want it to go to some things like that. Exactly. Exactly. You know what? Number one, start test driving on yourself. Okay. Um, so, um, if you go back to your contacts, <clears throat> and remember when I said when you first open this up, it's going to give you your tasks when you get here. So if today was the day your smart plan said, send a handwritten note to Christine Jagetti, handwritten birthday card to Christine Jagetti, that would show up here in my tasks okay. for the day. And if you have the Kelly app, K-E-L-L-E -L -L -E app on your phone, it's going to send you a notification too. Perfect. All right. So that's where you're going to see those things. The other pieces that are automated, like if it's an email or a text message, those are automatically going to go out. Um, I, I put myself on a monthly neighborhood nurture. So every month I automatically get that. And I can click through that and see what it's saying about property values and what's for sale in my neighborhood. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So feel free to put yourself on any of those that you don't know. And once you put it into my smart plans, when we're back here in smart plans, um, so if I click on open house follow up, if I click on over here edit, I can edit the name of this to be one open house follow-up for 123 Main Street. I can go in here and edit any one of these pieces and change it and customize it to exactly how I want it. And when I get to the bottom, I just hit save and it's done. Okay. Yeah. Save right up here. So any of those smart plans you can edit if you aren't sure about any of them. Um, always test drive it on yourself first. Don't ever do a mass one to anybody without doing it first. And when I send like um, that one that I made for daily post, I would go in here and I'd select a filter by my tag. Um, apply. So if you're sending the invitation to all your soccer friends for the World Cup party, you're going to put that out there. Now you're going to um, select everybody. And now you're going to make your, uh, here's create bulk action. You're going to put them all, um, add to a smart plan. Okay. Maybe if there's a smart plan or you're going to do something specific there. Okay. Make sense? That's one of the ways that we are communicating with our database. All right. So I didn't manage to turn those off. Okay. Um, the other piece I will show you is if I go into this contact and I go into, so you can see here, it's going to show you everything that happens. You put them on a smart plan, an email was sent, it would show a text message was sent. If they replied, this is going to show you all the activity that goes on in that account with that contact of yours. Smart plans. This will be where you say, I'm going to add her to a smart plan. If I've added, see, these are my smart plans. So from the library, these are the ones I've added to my smart plan. And I can go ahead and select any one of these and just hit start and then I can add them to that plan. Any questions? Okay, and now I love you all and I'm going to go prepare for a team meeting because we have a special guest today. Um, I also have two resources I am going to give you guys as you're working on building your database and communicating with your database. One is called Do the Database 2, the DTD2, we call it. 
and it has two letters of the alphabet that you call every week. And um, because we have a 26 letter alphabet, it goes 13 weeks. And guess what? 13 weeks is your 90 days, right? Funny how that works out. So I will, um, I'll have this here for you guys or I can email that over to you. The other thing is, um, in bold, which I loved bold, the last digital bold that I took, they gave us this resource, which is who do I already know that isn't in my database? Like, who's your dentist? Who's your doctor? Who's your spouse's doctor? You know, uh, who does your taxes? Who cuts your grass? Who do you know that does landscaping, household repairs? So these are all names, you know, questions you can ask yourself. You can go through and start filling in names and realize, oh, they aren't my database. Oh, I should put these people in my database. And it's just prompt questions that help you build out your database with people you normally wouldn't think of. Okay? Yay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Wendy. You're welcome, guys. Um, I will see you shortly in team meeting. Hopefully my computer will be running. Um, I have to make Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. See you shortly. Bye. Bye.